My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate everybody watching, uh, liking, subscribing. Uh, hit the bell and comment below. Uh, please leave your Ethereum or Bitcoin address for the 100 subscriber giveaway for the cold storage coin and uh, $20. So that way you can put uh, something on the cold storage coin when I send it to you in the mail for the winner. So uh, moving in the market, uh, $249 billion. Not looking good. We're sitting at around $250 billion still. And uh, let's say we lost about 25 billion in the past week. So not, not looking good for the week anyways, but you know, the overall hype for uh, Bitcoin and the market is starting to look better, you know, as far as the news goes and um, industry money. Uh, ETFs, um, so things like that are gonna be coming into play. Uh, futures markets obviously are still gonna be around, but you know, they don't seem to be helping the market any very much anymore, but um, so, you know, let's move right into it. There's not many gainers today. There's like 89% top gainers uh, as far as the highest percentage for the gainers today. And then it goes down from there. So not many gainers. Um, moving right into Bitcoin here. So I wanted to uh, kind of show you what I'm looking at here. You know, so I've obviously I've made another corridor here um, for the most recent corridor. And, you know, according to Fibonacci here, everybody does it the other way. They, they put the one down here. And they put the zero up here. Uh, and, and again, if you think it's on a downward trend, then uh, I guess that's what you want to do. But I'm hoping for an upward trend. So, you know, according to this, um, as an upward trend uh, set Fibonacci, it, it hit that 382 line. And now it's just kind of riding just around that 382. This is a day chart from GDAX, BTC, USD. Um, but let me give you another uh, view here of what's going on. You know, let's go back to that real quick and uh, let me show you what I'm uh, looking at here as far as with the Ichimoku cloud. Okay, so the Ichimoku cloud with these, uh, with these moving averages and this corridor set in, you know, it, it has to go straight through this cloud in order to, you know, weather the storm and then be back up on an upward trend, considered an upward trend. So. You know, you're talking 7,500 to, you know, 8,000. I mean, it doesn't really seem like it's going to weather into any storms. And every time I ever see it that it ever goes through a storm, an Ichimoku cloud, okay, it, it goes down. So, or it stays underneath the cloud, you know what I mean? I haven't really seen it really push up over, you know, it, it kind of hit this cloud down here and then it just stayed up over it. And then once it broke under it, it's been on a downward spiral since and so it doesn't look good for bitcoin and in my last video i, I even said that it doesn't look good that it's going to go down and sure enough that it did um so I, I hate to be right with things like this you know what i mean i don't want to even you know toot my own horn on that but you know macd says it's you know on a sell point and um you know the rsi doesn't say yay or nay on anything it's sitting around 45 right now so uh, but again l let me show you another perspective of kind of what i look at here um the ma moving average i moved to 13 and 34. the reason why i moved it to 13 and 34 and this is a little tidbit uh, for you guys is that those are fibonacci numbers okay so when you use these uh ma is a spin with fibonacci um you're getting a moral, uh, it, you know, Fibonacci is kind of a morality, ma mathematical of, of morality, of, of the human factor. Um, and that's why Fibonacci retracement, um, you know, works well, at least as far as gauging things. It doesn't tell you anything. It just gauge, it helps you gauge things a little bit better in percentages and probabilities. So with that being said, you know, I moved to the 13 and 34 because um, through my trading bot, actually, I'm going to be using 13 and 34 because they are mathematical cousins on the Fibonacci retracement. And of course, the Ichimoku cloud that I add in there as well is the same because we're on a day chart. So um, and it doesn't really matter if I put it on a day or an hour. It's still kind of showing you that it's there's a cloud uh, on top of it and it's got to weather through that cloud. So uh, let, let's get rid of the Ichimoku. Um, and this yellow line here, this was the old corridor I did on my last video. And like I was saying that it looked like it was going to break that and then sure enough it did, but now it didn't break it dramatically, I guess, relatively speaking. Um, and now it's kind of going sideways. So is it going to go back up, you know, and have a short bull run? It's kind of the question right now. I mean, I'm hoping and everybody hopes that it's going to go back up. But I mean, look at the, 
look at the downward trend that we've been on in such a such a long time that you know we, we need ETS we need in the industrial money we need retail investors we need things like that um, to uh, make things go up um, and you know when Bitcoin goes up everything else goes up slowly you know it follows it um, slowly so uh, so look at into this real quick I was I was reading this guy's uh, um, uh, take on Bitcoin too and they consider these, you know, the, the, a body, you know, forming. So you have the left shoulder, you have a head, and then you have the right shoulder. And, you know, right at the right shoulder is where I kind of put the corridor. And it, it's kind of showing you the same thing. So what he's basically saying is on May 5th to July 12th, bottom of the current bullish reversal shows significant resistance, awaits 6,400, 6,900, 7,000, and 8,000. And, you know, if looking through the Ichimoku cloud and all that stuff that we were just kind of looking through, it says the same thing, you know, it's got to go up to 8,000 or 7,600, you know, it's kind of whatever the guy was saying is kind of what, what, so whatever he got to that using these waves or these Bollinger bands or whatever he's been in using and propulsions, um, it, 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 it corresponds with the way I'm doing things as well. So, uh, correlates, I should say. So that, that's good. Uh, further, the channel between 6,000 and 7,000 remains an incredible uphill battle for the world's most infamous digital currency. And that's probably, again, this is just my own you know, take on things. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, Bitcoin futures, you know, if they have their contracts and they're set 6,000 probably to 7,000 around those areas because uh, they were last month as well. And uh, they took a really, really bad dramatic uh, hit on that. So... Is it going to do it again or is it going to stay between these lines until, uh, you know, the next uh, elephant walk, I should say. So we shall see. So moving forward into some other news. Uh, KuCoin. KuCoin revised bonus programs. I rate some KuCoin shareholders. So KuCoin has changed their program, bonus program around uh, to a point where um, they can now pay KuCoin share token holders uh, 50 percent. So it's, this is basically what this says. The new bonus upgrade went into effect this week. KuCoin is using 50 percent of all the trading fees generated by the platform to buy KuCoin shares from the market and redistribute them to users. As such, users will gain more access to KuCoin shares, which doesn't necessarily increase the value of the tokens because that's what they thought it was going to do. That is perhaps the biggest gripe people have with the new approach as KuCoin can only buy back so many tokens at a time. So. You know, they, they kind of hit themselves with, uh, you know, too much volume, too much, you know, uh, uh, you know, that they said that they were going to do and then they can't back it up because they can only buy back so much at a certain time. Sad to kind of see, you know, and um, are here, but um, we'll see if they can fix the problem. I mean, they just started with it. So uh, this week, so with the new bonus program. So we'll see what happens. I mean, KuCoin shares was a, you know, a leader on the leaderboard for 24 hour changes the past couple of days. So. Some users have shown their dismay in a rather odd manner. One Reddit post uh, claims that this is a sign that KuCoin will perform a major exit scam in the coming months. I use KuCoin all the time. I, I, I make sure that you know that the exchanges that I use are uh, as secure as possible, and KuCoin is actually one of those secure uh, exchanges that I do believe in uh, quite highly. So um, we'll see about their bonus program, but I did want to touch on that, that they're having a bonus program where 50% of the coins uh, from the trading fees generated by that platform to buy will be now to buy KCS will be redistributed back to users who are holding it. So uh, good to see. So something that was big in the in the news, I think everybody kind of knows about this. This was like the biggest thing on Google once I uh, put in uh, uh, news for crypto and Malta. You know, so the Maltese um, Parliament is uh, letting crypto exchange Binance back to create first decentralized tokenized bank. So um, I believe back in March, Binance uh, said they were going to move to Malta, and they have. And they're making big strides there. So yeah, so they relocated. Binance first announced the relocation to Malta in March. Last month, rebuilding that change had already set up a bank account on the island. So I mean, they're making strides and, you know, uh, according to Bloomberg, Binance has already invested 5% stake, stake along with other anchor investors at a $150 million, $155 million pre-money valuation. Pre-money value valuation, it's at $155 million. So 
The project seeks to become the world's first decentralized community-owned bank. The owners of the future bank excuse me, will be issued with legally binding equity tokens in return for their investment via the blockchain-based equity fundraising platform, New Fund. So, I mean, this is going to be awesome to see. You know, if they can get a, an actual decentralized tokenized bank up and running and, and Maltese government is just going to be booming. I mean, I mean, they, they are all for it and they are honored to have it. So, uh, great thing to see. So another thing I want to touch on is Binance has recently made its first foray uh, into crypto fiat trading, unveiling a new platform, Binance Uganda, which supports the Ugandan shilling alongside major cryptocurrencies. So they're getting into Africa, um, and Africa is, is one of those countries that is going to benefit highly with cryptocurrency. But again, regulations and things like that need to be uh, fixed before they can actually do something. Uh, on, a, on a wider, bigger scale. And it's coming. It's coming down the pipeline. It's, you know, we all want it to happen now, but, you know, patience and patience, you know, is the key. So, can Cardano's ADA new proof of stake protocol reverse the downtrend? I, I don't really, I mean, when I read this whole thing, it had really said nothing about reversing any type of downtrend. It's just basically saying that they've solved, proof of stake is solved, um, as he uh, said this back in April. And um, in the Ouroboros Genesis could soon back ADA, uh, which is currently valued at $3.3 billion. So basically what this basically says is proof of stake is better than proof of work. They're right due to scalability because Bitcoin is now hitting that even though whatever you know um, boosters that they're using and, and drivers and, um, and all this stuff – it's not enough for them to scale, especially if, if the investors are going to come in and they're going to take over Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to become the investor's money, the big investor's money. And then thing, and then other coins are going to have to come into play like ADA in order to take care of the common person. It's just as simple as that. As much as we want, you know, Bitcoin to become the people's money, you know, the universal um, currency, there's only, you know, so much Bitcoin out there. So... You know, if the investors come in, and which we want them to do, they're going to eat up all the Bitcoin. Um, so there's not going to be much left for the little guy, and it's going to be very, very expensive. So ADA is, is I think, is going to be um, obviously, you know, third uh, generation cryptocurrency that is taking care of a lot of the issues that Ethereum and Bitcoin have obviously first initially had, and EOS is having, and NEO is having, and all these other ones. So. Uh, Cardano just looks like a great one uh, to have, and it's at 13 cents right now. Um, some people say it's going to be at 250 and by the end of the year, and a five-year prediction at 10 dollars. So we shall see if that happens. So moving forward, Litecoin. You know, I've been looking into Litecoin as far as my per own personal day trade and so on and so forth. And you know, they, they're even saying it. You know, it's lose. Is it losing its shine? And man, I kind of think it kind of is, but it, it almost seems like they're consolidating. And they are really, really pushing, you know, POS systems and so on and so forth to really get Litecoin out there to the average person, the average Joe. Instead of going the way, you know, the, the way of the investors, the big investors like everybody wants, they kind of, as far as what I've been, you know, researching, they kind of see it as it's kind of come. So why not we, why isn't anybody really, you know, focusing on the little guy now by getting POS systems up, by making sure and integrating that they know how to use cryptocurrency in the first place. And Litecoin wants to be that, that, that coin that everybody wants to learn off of. So, you know, is Bitcoin obviously is going to be the godfather, but everyone's going to know Litecoin when it comes to a day-to-day -day thing. That's the goal, I believe, is what Litecoin is going to want to do. So... Uh, kind of a good thing, good thing to see. Uh, I just I hope Litecoin starts getting more shine because it's at seventy bucks and it was at three fifty at one point in time. So, okay, so Ledger Nano S, so the Ledger uh, company, uh, great company. They want to get a hundred tokens on uh, their devices by twenty twenty, and right now they're only dealing with like a couple dozen on the devices. So you know they're coming out with new devices, um, and uh, they've actually come out with a new app as well. So if we want to sign those institutional customers, they don't have a choice. And this is, you know, what the um, CEO says. Uh, we have to support the top 100 cryptos minimum. And they're absolutely correct. They, they really do in order for all the institution uh, and money and customers to use their products. And, um, uh, you know, kind of like I was saying, you know, they have, a, they have an app out. And we'll take a look at that in a second. 
but it's a very versatile app and it's kind of an amazing cool app uh, that kind of puts a lot of things together it doesn't have all the bugs fixed uh, quite yet um, of course nothing out there is 100 percent right now when it comes to crypto and anything um, and I'll, again i'll get into that when we move forward so move, moving into this um, you know there are strategies with institutional events or investors they have two okay two business lines targeting institutional investors one is a series of partnerships with organizations such as Nomura, Nomura Bank in Japan, which uses Ledger's tools for full custody services, more akin to a traditional deposit. So that's good to see. The other is called The Vault, an enterprise-grade custody solution for teams at an institution like traders at a hedge fund to self-manage cryptocurrency assets, an arrangement that's more in line with the crypto community's ethos. Well, this multi-signature wallet is connected to many individual hardware devices for each team member. Now, the problem is the different managers that are signing off on Transit, well, uh, they don't want to be self-reliant. As much as they, 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 they can be self-reliant you know, reliant on this and, use and, have, and manage their own private keys, they don't want to be completely self-reliant. So what they kind of say here is the best solution is I have a key, my partner has a key, and some guy that I've never heard of, obviously, at the end of the, of the, of the way on the transaction um, has a key. So... Um, it's kind of a, 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 a little twist of, of old ways using new digital assets. So old world ideas, I guess is what they call it, um, about custody to these new digital, digital assets. So they are on their way of doing big things in the hardware as well. And now they have a wallet out, um, crypto wallet uh, app out. And uh, now you don't have to use Chrome anymore in order to uh, get your updates and so on and so forth. You can add all your wallets onto here. I, I mean, that was kind of the cool thing. It's called Ledger Live app. Um, and uh, again, you can add all of your wallets onto here um, and then you can track everything that's happening. Um, almost like coin tracking, you know, or anything like that. And I use coin tracking to, uh, you know, do my, all my IRS paperwork and track all my coins and track all my wallets. And now they're saying they can, you can put all your wallets onto here um, and it'll track it for you. So just like coin tracking, it's doing that for you um, as well as you're able to trade your coins on and off your uh, Ledger Nano S or whatever Ledger hardware wallet you're using um, or leave it on the actual wallet app. So it, it, it's cool to see, you know, that they are doing that. So uh, I'm sorry, I keep scrolling through things, but more interesting, you can now add all your wallets to the, to the Ledger Live app. You won't have to switch from one app to another to view your wallets. When you can click the add button, the app will retrieve existing wallets on your device. You can also generate a new set of keys and a new wallet from there. Uh, once you've added all your wallets, you can get an overview of your entire portfolio. So again, just like uh, coin tracking, the app gets historical pricing information from popular exchanges, such as Kraken and Bitfinex, you can also click on individual accounts to see how a specific cryptocurrency has evolved over time. The, the portfolio interface looks like a Coinbase account, well designed, and it's a great way to, for quick, to get a quick look at your accounts. Many Ledger users have been using tracker websites and apps. These services let you enter a cryptocurrency and the amount you own to gain an overview of everything you own independently of the wallet. So Ledger's new app partially replaces tracker services, partially. So they haven't done and gotten everything out of the way. And again, neither has uh, any other services. Um, coin tracking actually has has gotten a lot of, you know, um, replaced a lot of the tracking services, and, and, and you're able to to uh, uh, track almost all of your trades on there. Uh, it just depends on you know where your the main exchanges and the main wallets and so on and so forth. But all these other derivatives, they're still trying to catch on. Um, Moving forward, if you don't need to check your balance from your phone, you can get enough information with the Ledger app. You can see your balance without having to plug your Ledger device. That's great. You don't have to plug in your Ledger device to find to find out what your balances are. Because right now I have to do that um, every now and then just to kind of check on things and make sure I'm up to date with my um, uh, firmware and all that. So uh, it, 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 that's a good, that's a cool thing to see. Real quick, real easy, snap to it. Uh, the company is already working on new features. You'll be able to view and, man, uh, and manage your ERC-20 tokens in the future. So if you invest in a bunch of obscure ICOs, your tokens will be there too. The ledger also told me that you could imagine an integration with decentralized exchanges eventually. This way you'd be able to, to able to send tokens to an address to get another set of tokens back 
on another ledger generated address. It'd be a great way to exchange cryptocurrencies without signing up to a centralized exchange and leaving the ledger app. I mean, they're making strides with their hardware, you know, and that's kind of a good thing. It's something that's tangible, it's something you can grab, something, you know, um, I wouldn't say it's worth, you know, gold or anything, you know, like the, the cold storage coins are. Um, but I mean, Ledger Nano S, I mean, I have Ledger Nano S, I believe in it um, wholeheartedly. I've never had a problem with it. Um, and uh, if you look at my uh, uh, description or, you know, below, has all my affiliate links on there. Again, everything goes to the dogs um, you know, when I that I rescue and help out with. So, um, you know, click on the links. If you want to get a Ledger Nano S, you get it right from the manufacturer. Um, and all of their other products that they have available. So moving forward, Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Last video I did was at 37. Now it's at 33. Yesterday was at 29. So it went, it was up, then it went all the way down, and now it's kind of going back up a little bit. And this is just, you know, again, the morality of things and, and sentiment of, of the market, the emotional feel of it that I kind of use to help me kind of gauge things. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of sitting there. It's going sideways the way I see it. If it's not breaking 40, not breaking 50, and it's not breaking 20, I'm not really sweating about it. You know, that's that's kind of what I've been learning over the past seven months. Um, just to, you know, take it easy. You know, it's, it's as much volatility it's at is, is coming up and down so fast at us. Um, you know, I learned from the stock market, you know, just kind of sit back and, and sometimes you have to be a macro trader and just kind of watch everything. Um, while um, I'm digging into my bot trading, so on and so forth. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, and you guys have a great day, great night. Keep up the grind.